Hi there do-it-yourselfers. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to use performance tools 0.031 diameter rosin core solder. It comes in a storage tube so that way you can keep it all together. You don't have to worry about your solder just being all over the place. The cap you can pull it off to either feed it back in there or you can feed it through the small hole so that way whenever you need more you just simply pull it and it just feeds right out. You get 10 feet total of length inside the tube, so you, that's quite a bit of soldering that you can get done, because each little repair you're likely only going to use an inch or so. So now we talked about some of the features of the solder, let's go ahead and put it into action and repair a wire. Now if you need a solder gun so you can make your repairs with the solder, we do have a kit available here so that way you can get soldering done as well as a bunch of other useful items that come with this, whether you're going to be putting hitches, You've got a cutting knife in there, so it's really cool, not just for soldering, but for other applications as well. Uh, if you've got your trailer out there and all of a sudden you don't have your left turn signal, there's a good chance that the yellow wire that's going to it could be damaged. So we've got found our damaged wire. We've located where the issue is. We're gonna repair it. So we're gonna start by stripping back each end. And now what you don't get that comes included with your kit is heat shrink. If you're going to be soldering wires together, I highly recommend using heat shrink with it so that way you can cover your connection back up. So we're just going to take a piece of heat shrink here. We're going to slide it over the end. If you need some heat shrink, you can get that here at eTrailer. I'm going to go ahead and get the solder gun heated up though, because if it's not hot, it's not going to do its job here. So before we get our everything prepared, we're going to just turn it on. So if you look on the side here, it'll show on and off. We're going to push up slide it over to on and then click up on the lever and we can hear it now that it's lit you can adjust the temperature by how big the flame is down here using the adjustments so we're just gonna set it about there and we'll just let this get hot we're gonna take our wires and there's a lot of different ways that people have for techniques for twisting the wires together and soldering them together the way that I like to do it is to take the two wires and cross them about like this and we're going to take the two ends once crossed and we're going to flip them like this. And this way when we go to solder it, our wire is still in a straight path. If you just take the two ends and twist them together then you got like a thing sticking out. And I don't really like the way it looks once my repair is completed. But if you do it like this, you've got a very clean uh, wire going down. So now that we've got them twisted together, we're going to take our solder and our gun here. We want to heat the wire. Because if you touch this to the soldering iron, of course it's gonna melt the solder. I'm gonna show it to you here, but you really don't wanna to touch it to it. You can see it's melting it. At least you know your solder gun's hot. But we want it to stick to the wire. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go on the bottom of our wire, and we're gonna heat the wire up. We'll give it a second there to get some heat into the wire, because we want the solder to actually melt when it touches the wire. So we're just gonna give it a second there to heat it up because we want that solder to draw in to the strands that is in between each one. So we just gotta get enough heat in there to where it actually starts to pull it through. If you're having difficulties getting uh, solder to stick to the wire, then you may need some flux and put some flux on your wire. Some solders do have certain amounts of flux in them to help assist you with this. Depending on the gauge of your wire, it may take longer to get enough heat into it to heat it up. If that's the case, we're just gonna turn up our heat just a little bit more. So make sure we get enough heat in there to draw this in. There we go. And you can see here now that when I'm touching the wire, touching the solder to the wire, it's actually heating and melting on the wire. And that's gonna draw it in between each of those strands to ensure that we've got a nice solid connection that's not gonna come apart and also has very low resistance through it. Because that's one of the issues with butt connectors. Butt connectors are great. They're a quick, easy repair and you can get heat shrink ones to seal them so that way no moisture gets in there. But with a butt connector, you're just squeezing metal over wire so it does leave chance for small resistance to build up in there at all those different connection points. This is gonna reduce the amount of resistance that you have in the wire. We've got our sponge here, so if you've got solder and debris that builds up on the tip, you can wipe that off there. 
That'll help clean it up, and it does also help to cool it down if you're all done as well, so that way you can uh, get this taken apart and put back in the case. We'll then slide our heat shrink down to cover up the work that we had just done to seal it all up. And then we just took uh, the tip after we cooled it off in the uh, wet foam pad that comes in the kit. We just screwed the solder tip out and then we slid the scoop on the end and that's going to help direct the heat all the way around to quickly shrink down our heat shrink. And the scoop helps make sure that the heat's directed to both sides. And with our heat shrink all shrunk down, our wiring repair is complete. You definitely want to make sure you get those ends sealed up, keep out any dirt, keep out any moisture, which could cause corrosion later on down the road. But you can see here that with this repair, it's a much cleaner look than with a butt connector. Butt connectors take up a lot more space. So if you're making a repair in tight locations or if you have to feed wires through uh, through openings like grommets and stuff like that for various accessories you're going to be running and you have to cut it and put it back together you can see how much cleaner and this is a better repair than what a butt connector is. A butt connector again in most situations will get the job done but if you're wanting something that's going to last longer that you're never going to ever have to worry about and it's going to have lower resistance in comparison which can be important depending on the type of circuit that you're making a repair to then this is the better route to go. And that completes our look at Performance tools, 0.031 diameter rosin core solder.